Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 2! Last time, we got ourselves basically annihilated by bringing the wrong party to the first fight we found in this dungeon. This time, different party, better party, one of the best parties in the game. And we will find out why. Let's try this again. And we're going to get pincered a second time in a row. Again, I have set up all my characters with swimsuits. But first and foremost, we want to stalk with everybody. We're going to need to stalk in order to take out pretty much any of the enemies. But we don't want to stalk too far because we really do need to take out that one guy so we stop getting back attacked really quickly. So let's get a couple of stalks. I know I said I was going to start the battle uh, without with all of this stuff already done, but I figured I'll be doing enough of that in boss fights. Uh, so we can show off a little bit this time to just kind of show how to deal with this situation. Since I did show how difficult it was last time, I figure it makes sense to show how not as difficult it is this time. It's still by no means easy. Ow. So now's the time we got to start throwing healing out there. Junior's going to have to heal as well. And then I should be able to set up... Yeah, actually, that probably will work fine. So we're going to heal you. And then I'm going to have Cosmos start this whole process. But before we start boosting up our characters... Ow. I would like to... Well, I did want to put on... Uh, Ice Sword, because this guy is weak to ice. But I want to put it on Momo, since he's also weak to Aether. Necessity, that is. And his break zone is BC. So, what I want to do, since I can't break him with, uh, with Momo, is I want to break him here, and I want to boost you. So, BC, and start unloading. Still not a whole lot of damage. Now, the reason why I want to set it up this way is because when... Now that you're broken, I can use my circle attacks to knock him into the air. Still not going to do very much damage. But after this is done, he's going to fall into the down status for Momo, who is going to unleash hell. Now... This goes to what I mentioned a few episodes ago about Momo being the DPS, and yes, she is most definitely the DPS. Now, because my characters are really stupid, they aren't going to turn around. Now, I believe some of their damage spawns from how much damage you've dealt to them, but I just want to make sure I'm facing the right way. So everyone's going to have one attack. They can counter boost, by the way. And now I'm going to have to start healing those status effects. Ow. And I'm going to have to start healing. This battle is still going to take a long time. And since I've shown off these two enemies, and there's only, I think, two more enemies in this part of the dungeon, we are going to be cutting most of the other boss fights out. Or normal fights, sorry, because they just take way too long in this dungeon. They don't do this throughout the entire game, but they definitely do it a lot early on. All right, so you're going to turn around and fire on you. And you can stalk, and I would like to get someone to... So that that unleashes slow on me again, since I already have the status effect in place, it would turn it red, and it would become an H status effect that I won't be able to cure. All right, so there we go. Now I can start healing status effects. You can see this is kind of a long, drawn-out process. Why most of the battles in this game will be really tedious to do. And once... Like, you need to really get a good chunk of the way through the game to get the useful skills so that you don't have to do all the prep up in order to do all this stuff. So we're going to remove that status effect. And then we're going to remove another status effect. And I just started this video, and we've been in this... No, that's not really what I wanted to do, but that'll work. I do want to get rid of those status effects, if at all possible. 
I did mention before that the percentage of uh, status curing spells working is dependent on the individual character. Uh, not so much as it's basically the characters with better uh, magic stats or ether stats will have a better chance of doing it. Uh, Junior's toward the low end. Momo should be 100%. I don't know why that didn't work. In fact, I believe Momo is 100%. I don't know how that missed. Did I target the wrong person? That's entirely possible. Not very bright sometimes. All right. So now we need to stock some more. And as you can see, we spend a lot of time just trying to get ourselves in a situation where we can actually hurt enemies instead of actually killing the enemies like in pretty much any other JRPG. Uh, I just I don't like the idea of spending so much time doing next to nothing and prepping so that I can fight the enemy. I'd rather just fight the enemy, end the battle quickly and move on. There are many RPGs where you can be finished battles in under a minute and in this game that really isn't possible. At least not right now. She's already got a full stock gauge. Unfortunately, the enemies have a full boost gauge, which is rather unfortunate. I'd rather they not have that, but oh well. Alright, so these guys are expressions, and they have a BB weak zone, and they're weak to fire and physical. And you put that on me again, you bastard. So I'm going to have Momo start throwing out Flame Sword, and since all three of these characters are... Uh, their basic attacks are, they don't have an element to them, so it makes it really, really easy uh, to apply Sword Ethers and do a lot of damage that way. Uh, yeah, we can just throw Flame Ether on you. And then Momo will do it to itself, and we should be pretty well set to go. Momo's attacks will be considered B in this case. Um, oh. Okay, we could do it that way too. Um, would you stop doing that, please? You're really getting kind of irritating with your... Um, I did select the right one, right? Flames are there we go. With your constant boosting all the time. So I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to boost you so that I get additional skill points. All right, so I said BB. And finish off this guy. You can see how much your damage changes when you can actually deal some efficient damage to the enemy. And as you can also tell by the amount of damage I take, you're going to want to heal after pretty much every single battle that you do in this entire dungeon, which is really annoying. And it just makes this entire dungeon just drag so much. Anyway, so we're going to stalk, and you're going to finish off this guy, maybe? No, maybe not. Oh, right, there we go. I'm glad I could help. Yeah, like I said in the last episode, even though she's in our party and she's not supposed to be able to do anything, you know, other than rudimentary stuff, she's still there. And look at that time. With the right party and prepped, it takes eight minutes for a random encounter. Of course, this will be less than that if the uh, enemies are not going to pincer me in, but a lot of the time they are anyway. Now, here's a trap. I'm going to activate the trap if these enemies are not new. We will see you in a moment. Okay, so with the trap in effect, that took two and a half minutes versus almost eight. Normal battles, somewhere around five. Okay, I'll finish with that battle. Now, you want to head behind here for a box, I think. No? I'm pretty sure there's something I can blow up around here. Ah, this box. There's a box somewhere I can blow up that gets me stuff that the enemies drop already. That's just great. Anyway, we'll walk very, very slowly. Now, one thing to note is that, uh, of course, you have your reserve characters you can use to heal yourself. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you run back to the save point every once in a while to recover your MP or switch out to different characters. And you can use the running away trick to just enter a battle with the characters you need to recover MP with, or EP rather, and have them in the reserves and then run into the battle, run away, and then they'll gain 
some of 25% of their EP back. So that's one way you can do things. I think over here is something for later. It's hard to know where all of the items are in this area. It's not there, is it? Okay. I'm thinking because we go back to areas multiple times in this game, I'm going to probably fish around at lots of areas and look for items that aren't there yet. Uh, so, anyway, I would recommend not blowing up these things. Yeah, that, that's the main reason why we don't want to do that. that. That's a bad idea. Anyway. Okay. So, we could blow up this house, and, well, I can do this one, because this one, even though we're not supposed to do it until later, you just have to keep spamming the button, by the way. It leads to a forbidden device. It's an encephalon dive device. Which we can't use yet. That's for bonus dungeons at the end of the game kind of stuff. So, I will at some point go back there. I don't think most of these have items in them. With her on well, side, we can't this lose. has a new enemy, but this is definitely not an ideal situation. You don't really want to run from enemies. This leads me to another aspect of this game. There is an escape function. For some ungodly reason, the only two characters who can use this are Momo and Shion. I really don't know why. And it doesn't matter if you're pincered in or not, you can still use it. Now, there's two reasons why I want to avoid that. One is because I need to heal up. And two, because I want to get that trap going on this guy. There we go. Now I'll get my additional boosts, I won't be pincered in, and the battle will be significantly easier. As you can see, it gives you a random amount complete. for each character. I usually seem to get one, two, and three combinations quite often. Uh, but anyway, we have a new enemy. This guy is 200% weak to Thunder, a 25, 125 to Pierce, and he's weak to Physical. The other guy we've already seen, Momo doesn't need to do that. So I want to use Thunder Sword on Junior at some point. Uh, but first, I want to use Ice Sword on Momo so this she can take out the big guy. Momo is basically the only one who can deal any reasonable amount of damage to that guy right there, the big guy. And it's really unfortunate because it just means the battles take way too long. She basically has to be in, and you have to use Ice Sword, otherwise no one does any damage to this guy. I didn't get the points, but I'll live. So his break zone is A, B, B. So what I need to do in order to even get that started is I need to use a circle button with either Junior or Momo. Uh, you can do A when someone's in the air, Cosmos can, but right now she cannot, so she can only do B at the moment, at least I believe. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so, first things first, I want to get Thunder Sword going on Junior because he can do the most amount of damage. And then hopefully Momo gets her turn first. Yeah, he can also do that, which is why you want to get rid of him quickly or the other guys quickly. So I want to use a circle for A and then go like this. And hopefully I can deal enough damage. Ah, looks like I probably can. Without having sword ethers at this point, you're basically screwed. Let's get Battles will always take like, you know, eight, 10 minutes and they'll take forever. Like with a, with a trap in effect, they can take two minutes and they're all right. But by my standards, two minutes for a random encounter in a JRPG, still a little too long for my taste. I'd rather not. Now, if we go over here, we'll see this boulder looks kind of different in terms of texture from the rest of it. We will have to come back here later, but uh, we'll actually be coming from the other side. There'll be a secret passage that runs through the uh, runs through the mountainside there. Now, there's only one other new enemy around here. Hopefully, this is it. No, no in new enemies there. Now, we're at a point... Eh, there's enemies here. Um, yeah, let's take these guys down. Alright, a couple things of note after that battle. One, um, you're 
probably going to want to make sure everybody stays healed up. If you ever run into a battle where they pincer you in like that, like I did there, there is other, unless you've activated a trap already, um, there is no downside to choosing the escape command and then restarting the fight where you're not at a severe disadvantage. It also makes the battle take less time overall that way. So I would recommend doing that if you can. As you can also see, I'm starting to run out of EP with Cosmo. She's the one who's been throwing out uh, Ether Swords to most of my characters. This will... Well, basically, this leads to one of the things I would like to learn before too long. Under Class H, we have some new things that we got from the secret keys that we gained during our little subquests there. Psycho Pocket, of course, I've made sure eight times that you picked up before coming here. Break. What this will do is, you know that random chance you have to gain a stock gauge so you can do a circle attack after you've broken an enemy? This increases it by 10%, so that's pretty useful. And it's a mastered skill, so you don't need to worry about equipping it. This one is absolutely imperative to survive throughout most of the game. Focus 1 and later Focus 2. Recover 10% EP with the stock command. Considering how often we're going to be stalking, considering we have to do it to kill so many of the enemies, we're going to be able to keep our EP a lot easier that way. However, I don't have enough to do that yet, because as you can see by the amount of uh, class points that I have, I need more than that because uh, I need to work on uh, level 2 class C as well, which has Medica All, which is very valuable, Medica 2, which is valuable, and Revert, so I don't have to be wasting my revives all the time. It also has Vaccine, which raises status effect resistance by 10%, which I will i don't think I've ever used in any playthrough I've ever done, and I probably won't use this time either. But anyway, that's just kind of a couple of things of note. Now I know we haven't made a lot of progress today, uh, do I want to go down this way first? No, I want to go the other way first. I want to clear out the enemies. I will probably clear out the enemies in this area off screen uh, in between episodes because, I, like I said, I know we haven't gotten very far, but with the battles, they just take so long. There isn't really a way around that, which is rather unfortunate. Anyway, like I said, that's all for this one. We'll take out the enemies between now and the next one, and we'll see you guys next time.